in info session, um, our first one of the fall 2017-2018 season. Thank you for joining us or for um, looking, watching this through our archived links. Um, we hope this is informative for you and um, this will be a general overview of our programs, our MPH, Master of Public Health, and our Master of Social Work programs, and um, the basics that you need to know at this point for applying. And if you um, want additional information or if questions arise, you may um, submit them live um, if you're watching the live stream. And we will do our very best to address all of the questions throughout. Um, and also, we hope we'll give you a lot of resources and opportunities to explore um, and find out more information in depth. Um, my name is Laura Peer. I am an admissions and recruitment specialist at the Brown School, and I've been here about two years, and um, I love my job, and I love connecting with prospective students, and um, I hope you will think of me as a resource um, now and into the future as you explore graduate programs. I have two current students with me, very lucky today, um, Bridget and Ruthie. I'm going to let them each introduce themselves. Sure. Hi, good afternoon from St. Louis. This is Bridget. I'm a second year MSW student. It still sounds strange to say that. <laughs> um, I'm in the mental health concentration and I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi everyone from St. Louis. My name is Ruth Katumba and I'm a first year MPH student here at the Brown School and I am hoping to specialize in epidemiology and biostatistics. I haven't really finalized in that decision, only been in school for about three weeks. <laughs> um, and I am originally, our home is Uganda. Great, thank you. And um, Ruth and Bridget will pop in throughout um, to share their experiences in the application process and um, getting to campus and their for first three weeks or uh, first full year, um, so we'll hear a lot of good insight from them as we go. I'm going to switch the view to our PowerPoint presentation, um, and so please bear with me a little. I'm going to be squinting at the screen a little, um, <laughs> so thank you, and then we'll get started, and please do submit questions. For those that have already submitted questions, I'm going to address them throughout and towards the end as well. Um, thank you for doing that. That one moment. Okay. All right, so here we go. <laughs> um, great, so this is um, a view of the Brown School. We're three buildings on campus on the Danforth campus of Washington University in St. Louis. Um, right on the edge of, of the city and right near Forest Park, a beautiful, um, very large municipal park. Um, and the Brown School is made up of three buildings. There's um, Brown Hall and Goldfarb and Hillman is our newest addition to campus and we're very proud of it. Um, and also Brown Hall was the very first building built for um, specifically for a school of social work in the country. Um, we always start with our mission because our programs are very mission driven. Everything we do at the Brown School really does go back to our mission. Um, and it is to educate and prepare future social work and public health leaders in areas of policy, practice, and research, to pioneer research and apply the results to impact policy and practice at a local, national, and international level, and to collaborate with organizations to improve access to and quality of social services and to address social and economic justice. So we're educating, we're conducting research, and we are collaborating and having an impact. Um, a quick look at the Brown School. We are a school of public health. Or, um, we have a public health program, we have our social work program, and then um, we also, within the Brown School, have our dual degree, which incorporates the, the MSW and the MPH, um, and you can complete those two degrees in three years um, instead of four. Um, and then we will take a peek um, in a little bit at additional options for joint degrees within both programs. And a bigger view at Washington University in St. Louis is it's con, um, 
comprised of seven different schools. So there's our the Brown School, then our School of Medicine, which is a, a leading school of medicine in the country, um, as is our School of Law, and the School of Engineering and Applied Science. Um, and we have the Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Arts under Art and Architecture. Then Arts and Sciences is our biggest school, and um, we have a large graduate program, and then our university college, um, as well as our um, undergraduate programs, and then the Olin School of Business. And we do collaborate with all of most of those schools in um, an academic way. Um, a little glance at the numbers. Um, some people are numbers people, so here we are. Um, 15 multidisciplinary research centers and two community-based projects. Um, we have over 400 partner practicum sites in St. Louis, within the nation, and globally. Um, there are 11 joint and dual degree options, nine concentrations within the MSW program, including an option to individualize and really create your own focus. Um, and then six additional specializations, which are like minors. Um, five MPH specializations, including one as a generalist, which is similar to the individualized concentration for MSW. Um, we have um, over, I think our number might be higher now, um, but over 7,600 alumni working um, in more than 50 countries. Um, I say a higher number because we just celebrated our, our 10,000th graduate um, from the Brown School, but that's from the inception um, early in the 1900s. So, um, and we had three, around 300 students began in the first, uh, as first years uh, this year with between our MSW, MPH, and dual and joint degree programs. And we like to um, talk about our very high faculty student to faculty to student ratio um, of 11 students to one um, faculty. There's a lot of personalized attention here as we will go into a little more detail. Um, and my job as a recruiter is often um, educating people about the fields of social work and public health. Um, and so we like to start our general presentations with a little, um, a little look at really what is social work. Um, and it is a field aimed at improving the overall well-being of populations, especially those that are historically underserved. And um, some people think of, of social work at that micro level, that case management level, um, and that is absolutely a part of social work. Um, but there's also the mezzo and macro levels, which are um, looking at um, groups, organizations, and populations. Um, so, and we, at the Brown School, we, you can come here and become prepared for any level of practice. And um, here's a snapshot of some of the issues that our students and faculty are looking at um, in an ongoing way, um, including mass incarceration and the, the uh, responsible ways to decarcerate people, um, gun violence, equity and in um, education and access to education, um, inclusive policies for LGBT communities, mental health awareness and access, and that encompasses, encompasses a lot of different areas, and um, social policy, including, um, you know, what's happening in the news right now with uh, DACA and the um, deferred action policy for um, immigrants. Um, so we are looking at what's happening right now and responding to it and we're engaged. Um, so let's talk about public health. Um, it is a, a simple definition for a pretty complex field is it is the science of promoting and protecting the health of people and the communities where they live, learn, work, and play. And um, our program is super transdisciplinary. We recognize you can't solve public health problems just by um, just with epidemiology or just with policy. You have to have everyone talking um, and understanding how their piece of the puzzle works together. Um, and so some of the areas our staff, our faculty are, are engaged in are the Affordable Care Act and what will become of it. Um, infectious disease like Zika virus um, and epidemiology of, of how diseases um, are spread uh, throughout the world. Um, disaster response, um, which is 
um, on everyone's mind right now with the hurricanes. Um, gun violence is also, we have it listed under social work and public health because it is, um, it has social implications and origins and certainly health and it affects health outcomes. Uh, addiction, the, our, our addiction crisis, opioid epidemic, um, how is that affecting people's um, lives and health? And then um, things like um, built environment and designing healthy cities. How are the spaces we inhabit contributing to our health or hindering our health? And um, the Brown School is unique. We have our school, our public health program and our social work program together in the same school. Um, and often people ask me, why are they together? And I think that um, Dr. Veda Sanders Thompson says it very well. Um, if we have, as a society, have disparities in income and education, we will have disparities in health. People can't begin behind and just miraculously catch up, barring something extraordinary. Through teaching and research, I want to make the extraordinary possible. And Dr. Thompson does teach across, um, in both programs, um, and looks at social determinants of health. Um, so research is a, an area where the Brown School excels with our 15 separate research centers, all led by faculty members um, with various sources of funding and lots of opportunities for our students to get engaged. Um, we, students can, um, learn from faculty by getting engaged as a research assistant or by um, applying to a master's research fellowship opportunity. Um, some students uh, will volunteer their time if a paid position isn't available, but we do have um, dozens and dozens of, of paid part-time opportunities. Um, and it's a great place to um, a great opportunity to get your hands um, involved in the work that's happening, um, the research, and then the community-based work as well. Um, we also have two community-based initiatives which in incorporate research, but also ha have a very explicit um, practice and outcomes-based approach, and that's For the Sake of All and then Homegrown St. Louis, and we have great information about both of those on the website. Um, both are looking at ways to um, address the disparities in health and social outcomes um, in St. Louis. Um, and then we also work in close partnership with um, the Institute for Public Health here at WashU, and then also the, the WashU uh, School of Medicine. And our students get engaged in the, both of those entities um, as they um, seek out those opportunities. Um, and I should say, so Washington University is a research institution and um, the Brown School is no different from that. However, if um, some of our students aren't interested in research and that is okay too, um, you will have to take a research methods course in your um, in your time here um, because everyone needs to be a, a smart consumer of research and you need to know how to utilize, access, um, assess and utilize research appropriately. But um, we don't expect everyone who comes in our doors to leave um, a top researcher. Um, there's a lot of people that have interest in, in direct practice and um, policy and other things. So research is a fundamental part of the work we do, but you don't have to be, that doesn't have to be your passion. But if it is your passion, there's a lot of opportunities here. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about our curriculum. And um, I want to um, thank you for being patient as I kind of flip-flop between our MPH program and our MSW program. They're, they're different, um, and um, I want to be able to touch on them um, both. So uh, thanks for your patience for listening to the pieces that may or may not be relevant to your areas of interest. But, um, but what we can say about both programs' curriculum is that they, we, um, every course has an evidence-based approach. Um, in both programs. We, we are utilizing the latest research, the latest data to create and, and um, use the best practices in the field. Um, we are also um, incorporating an anti-oppressive framework. And this is um, 
it's where it's it's a new initiative that um, is going to be incorporated into every aspect of our curriculum over the coming years, um, and um, it's we're transdisciplinary. I believe I mentioned that earlier, and that we we're collaborative and we um, we pro solve problems together for sustainable solutions, um, and we. As I said, you can come here and, and get a clinical social worker degree um, and take that uh, maybe traditional track, or you can use your MSW for any number of uh, quote unquote non traditional career traje trajectories. And so we're here, um, faculty and staff are here to support you in, in that work, um, whichever path you choose. Um, we offer flexible curriculum options. And, um, but I do like to say when I talk about flexibility, it is both programs are full time and both programs are on campus. So, but once you get here, <laughs> the flexibility is tremendous in um, making sure you're getting the, the education and experience you want to for your path. Um, and we're ground, everything we do is grounded in social, racial, economic, and health equity justice um, and that is who the Brown School is. Um, so I'm going to ask Bridget to talk a little bit about, um, could you please talk a little bit about your experience um, in, in classes? Sure. And the MSW program? No problem. So I'm in MSW program and doing the mental health concentration. So um, I do intend to do some of that like clinical counseling like Laura talked about. Um, that people traditionally think of. So I came in like thinking I would take a lot of classes that were about counseling and counseling techniques. And mm -hmm. I have taken some classes like that and that's what I wanted and expected, but I also have taken classes that kind of pushed um, for me to think about how um, mental health policy is significant, um, to think about how um, issues around the field I want to work in, I need to understand meso and macro level. Um, so yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised with some of those classes that weren't exactly like clinical. Um, I feel like my faculty have been very interested in what I want to study. I've gotten a chance to connect. Um, I have a couple mentors who have worked in um, higher ed, which is where I want to land is working with college students in counseling. Um, I'm very close with the chair of the sexual health education specialization, Susan Steeritz. Um, so I've learned a lot from her about her work in sex education, um, sexuality studies. So yeah, I think that there are a lot of opportunities for the faculty to um, get to know you one-on-one. -on -one. They are like very curious about why you're passionate about the field, what you want to do with your career. Um, they're very available. I feel like I came from a small undergrad, so I like small classes, and I do feel like I have the attention of my faculty. I can meet with them before or after class, um, do office hours. They're very easy to get a hold of if I need that. So. Great, thank you. And um, while Bridget was talking and sharing her experiences, I um, advanced the slide to show our actual, <laughs> your options within the MSW program. Um, so our concentrations and our specializations, which I mentioned they're optional and they are like a minor, an area you want to just kind of um, add to your profile or your portfolio and your, um, just your toolkit <laughs> and our skill set. Um, and if you don't choose a specialization, then you can just use your um, electives to take whatever is of interest to you. Um, and so one of the reasons I wanted to say to you why I picked the sexual health education specialization is I do want to do individual counseling, um, but also there's opportunity to do like sexual assault prevention or awareness work or like healthy relationship type of work with college students. I would also love to do that. So that's why I chose to add on that optional specialization. Um, and like Laura said, it's like a minor. You don't have to, but a lot of people are interested in another area rather than their main track or focus with their concentration. Thank you. Great. And then we also have an optional certificate, Affordable Housing and Mixed Income Community Management, which would utilize your um, elective credits. 
So on to the MPH curricula. Um, these are our five specializations, including the generalist track for those whose interests kind of straddle one or two or more of these areas, biostatistics and epidemiology, global health, health policy analysis, and urban design. Um, and then we do offer a certificate, an optional certificate in violence and injury prevention with four different tracks, focusing on four different um, groups. And um, Ruth, could you please talk about your brief experience so far as a first year MPH student and your, your early impressions of our of courses that you're engaged in? Okay. Um, again, my name is Ruth and I'm in my first year MPH and MPH program. I just started classes. This is my third week of classes. And I can say that in just the three weeks that I've been here, my mind has been open to so many aspects that I didn't really think about before I joined the Brown School. So having the curriculum is very comprehensive. Some of the classes that you take, like research methods, epidemiology, biostatistics, it just really opened up to your mind to the issues and how to deal with those issues and use that evidence basically to help people to get to a better health. Um, I'd like to say that the specialization, I want to specialize in biostatistics and epidemiology. Originally, when I applied to the Brown School, I was thinking more in terms of global health. But as I got more and in, more into the details of what the Brown School does and interacted more with some people here, I just realized that if I did specialize in epidemiology and biostatistics, I'd get the skills that I could use to branch off into the others and that kind of directed me to go back with that and that just shows that it is flexible you do get to choose your specialization and as you as you spend more time here and i've just been here for three weeks your interests kind of evolve and you pick up some new ones maybe let go of some other ones i also have been able to interact with faculty and administrative staff generally everyone in the brown school is set up to make your experience better and better and they're there to just listen to what you're thinking what your interests are and kind of help you direct that in a way that will make your time here as beneficial as possible they are very accessible whether it's through email going to their offices and they're very open about sharing their own research experiences and their own other life experiences so it's a very formative experience so far. great thanks ruth i'm glad you're having a good experience yes three weeks in awesome um, great. So um, here's a look at our at the joint and dual degrees we offer. Um, there's many of them, and if you go to our website, you can have a more in-depth look and certainly um, you know reach out to us if you have questions about um, any of them. But as I mentioned, within the Brown School, we have social work and public health. It's a three-year program for two master's degrees, um, and it's a great. Um, in, the skill sets are so complementary. And I know our dual graduates are really happy with the work that they find upon graduation. Um, and we are going to be um, unveiling or <laughs> un rolling out a, an MSP, Master of Social Policy degree in the coming um, one, in, one or two years. Um, and that will be available as a dual degree for both the, the MSW and the MPH. Um, programs. So um, stay tuned for that if you're interested in social policy, because that will be that is in the works and it will be happening. So, um, and again, um, you know, please follow. Feel free to follow up with um, through our website anytime with questions. We will get. We will we'll connect you with the the right person to give you the answers. Um, we are one thing at the Brown School that we're very serious about and proud of is our connections within the community. We offer coursework that is in the local community. Community, excuse me. Um, students have opportunities to um, go live in East St. Louis for a week um, through the East St. Louis Immersion Program, um, and then through the Affordable Housing and Mixed Income Program um, Certificate Program. Um, there's the, the middle picture there is from a field visit from that uh, program. Um, and then we also have courses where our students go to other cities. For example, our policy making and advocate, advocacy and analysis coursework that um, has taken students to DC for a spring break um, trip 
where they where our students actually presented health policy um, information to our um, senator, our state senator, and and her staff. So they were um, learning skills, but also actually impacting um, how our policymakers were, you know, the knowledge that they had about certain issues. Um, and then in a global context, each year we have a selection of um, global opportunities, um, so often to Haiti, um, to look at childhood hunger and undernutrition. Um, we've gone to Tanzania to look at um, population well-being in fishing communities. And um, this summer, a group went to uh, Berlin to look, to look at social entrepreneurship. Um, and that also had a public health component as well for interested students. Um, so, and Bridget has had experience in community-based um, coursework. Do you mind sharing? Sure, yeah. Example? So, like, even though some of these classes, the entire purpose is field-based course worker experience, like, there is that opportunity in almost every single class. I would say my faculty are very encouraging to learn about St. Louis, get involved. Um, some of your classes are designed that way with assignments. So one was my practice two class, which is about working with communities and organizations. Um, for the entire semester, I work with an organization in St. Louis called Voice that works with aging adults um, in different like nursing homes or retirement communities, assisted living. Um, and we actually went to Voice's office several times. We went to some of the agencies that they work with. Um, we were very much hands-on doing the work. Um, so some time was in class and lecture, but a lot of times it was like out in community. Um, for my sex society and social work class, we um, also worked with um, agencies outside of the Brown School. So one of those was working with the St. Louis public school system. And we went to some of the actual schools and talk with school social workers about age appropriate sexual health education, um, how to deal with sort of concerns or fielding parenting questions um, about like what is appropriate for kids. And it was really cool to like actually engage, actually be participating in that work rather than just like talking about it in the classroom. Great, thank you. Um, and we can't talk about our, our programs without talking about our faculty. Um, we have world-renowned faculty that are doing really innovative work and research and practice um, in, their, in, a, in a vast um, number of areas. Um, and so, um, and they become our students' mentors and um, Kind of like your board of directors you can have a, a group of faculty that you trust and, and turn to and and know that they will help you guide your career and help you make choices um, as you work through your program and beyond um, so um, and so yeah and besides um the work that that they are doing, there is um, the, besides the work in the classroom, excuse me, um, our faculty are doing research. Um, and in those 15 research centers, and I mentioned that there are many opportunities to engage in research with the faculty. Um, and um, I know that Ruth is working with Dr. Akenga as a, is an MRF, Master's yes. Research Fellowship. Um, Ruth, do you mind talking a little bit about your work? And maybe first of all, talk about the MRF that you're involved in and then the work you're doing with Dr. Akenga. Okay, so I am doing a Master's Research Fellowship, which basically I applied to through the application process and I got one with Dr. Akenga. Dr. Kinga is new to the Brown School. She's now, she's an assistant professor and she is doing a lot of research with breast cancer patients during their, di during their treatment and diagnosis and post that. And she's also doing a lot of environmental, other environmental health projects that have to do with how people perceive their environment and how it affects their health. So basically right now I am helping her do the literature review basically looking at what has been done in the field, what are the things that we are finding, that she's finding, 
in the studies that she's conducting that are similar to that? Are they supporting each other? And I'm basically helping her like get a summary and narrow that down, as well as designing questionnaires and interviews as we t interact with people in the community to try and get a feel about how they feel about their environment and their health. Great. All that in three weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Ruth. Um, yeah, and so there are a lot of ways to get involved. And, and even beyond the Brown School, our students find um, opportunities to do research and fellowships and uh, graduate um, kind of leadership roles within the, the greater WashU community, including our Gephardt Institute for Civic and Community Engagement. Residential life is a great fit for a lot of our students um, who already have that kind of RA experience. Um, Center for Diversity and Inclusion, um, and then also I mentioned a lot of um, opportunities at the School of Medicine. So um, there, if you are interested, um, you know it's it's up to you to explore the opportunities, and they are there, and um, as many of our students have found. All right. So um, another important piece of our curriculum for both programs, the MSW and the MPH, is the practicum experience. Um, just quick um, information, the MSW program requires two practica. One is the um, foundation practicum and the other is your concentration practicum. So um, and we have and then the MPH program requires one um, three credit practicum. So we have an office of field education their job is to advise our students so you, each student has a field education advisor and um, they help our students um, identify and um, connect with um, potential practicum sites and um, it's a process that they work through and it's there's it's an exciting time when everyone finds out their practicum sites it is a, a, a self-driven process you have the support in it um, of an advisor but we don't place you it's up to each student to um, to reach out and make their own connections with potential um, practicum sites and um, so and um, Bridget I know you um, Ruth has not had her started her practicum yet that won't be until the next few weeks that would be oh. scary oh <laughs> <I have>. yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> But Bridget is um, definitely, you've had at least one practicum experience so far. Do you mind um, talking about where that is and, and the, how the process worked for you? Sure. So I had foundation practicum last year at a agency called Legal Services of Eastern Missouri, and I was doing case management for the family law unit. Um, they have 13 units in their office, so it's just like, working directly with usually domestic violence survivors. Um, so a lot happens in between the legal proceedings where a domestic violence survivor might need help finding housing or um, knowing what it means to get an order of protection or getting counseling, things like that. So um, I was doing a lot of sort of referral and connections and safety planning with clients. Um, and now for my longer practicum, my concentration practicum that goes my whole second year, I'll be doing individual counseling at a domestic violence shelter called the Violence Prevention Center. Um, and I get opportunity to work mostly with adults, again, who are domestic violence survivors. Um, I'll also do some group counseling and potentially some um, children's and art therapy counseling, which I know less about, but um, it's a good opportunity to just kind of get my feet wet with um, that hands-on clinical experience um, with a lot of support and supervision both at my site. I have a supervisor who's an MSW and alum from the Brown School and from Brown School staff through field education. Um, like Ruth explained earlier, there's just a lot of support and anything that you do if you're not understanding a process or a form or um, the requirements of things there's like 12 people to help you out so um, I felt very encouraged and supported through both like finding and processing that experience great thank you um, and now we're going to change a um, 
course, a little bit and talk about the Brown School community. Um, as a student, well, that was actually a really nice segue from Bridget, um, that um, this is a list of all, this is, there's a whole unit within the Brown School that's dedicated to students, it's academic affairs, and um, all of these pieces are part of it. Um, and it's a large staff and we're all here to help you succeed um, and give you support in whatever type of support it is that you find you need during your two years at the Brown School. Um, so including, so are your three tiered advising system where you'll have an academic advisor that will help you get registered for class and make sure you're taking the right classes and hitting all the right requirements. And then your concentration or faculty advisor, once you have um, really um, decided on your concentration um, or, speci or specialization, and then your field advisor who will help you with your practicum. Um, we have a stat lab for people that need a little help with data they're working on for um, an assignment or research. Um, communications lab to help with um, academic writing and making presentations. Um, we have student groups that are started by students but supported by um, staff. Professional development programs that are accessible to the external, like the greater St. Louis community, but also at a very great discount to our current students. Um, and then we have an in-house library, in-house financial aid, in-house um, career services. So, um, and we kind of talked about the other one, the other pieces there. So not only are you coming for, you know, your classwork, but um, we really do try to make sure you're, you have everything you need to really succeed here. Um, so, yeah, so if you have any questions and we can communicate you, can, we can um, help you communicate with the various aspects. Um, and we will be talking about financial aid here briefly. Um, but I also wanted to point out, we're, we're going to have to wrap up soon, but career services um, is one that a lot of our prospective students are interested in. And they work with you throughout your two years to help you um, you narrow down your goals and then once you're ready to graduate and get a job they they're there every step of the way to help you um, and they really take their job seriously and um, really are working to get our brown school students out into really great jobs um, so st louis um, is i'm going to kind of go briefly through here but um, if you are coming from Anywhere outside of the Midwest, you will notice that the cost of living here is very low. Rent is um, very affordable and um, housing is abundant and um, there's a lot of different styles of housing available and you can live close to campus or pick a neighborhood anywhere in the St. Louis metro area. Um, at, with your, um, as a student, you receive a free metro and bus pass. So. Um, we really encourage our um, students and staff and faculty to take alternate forms of transportation for um, sustainability purposes, and um, we support that with a free pass. Um, there are so many ways our students get involved in their community, in, in the St. Louis community, and there are so many ways to do that um, through community service. Um, but then there's just a lot of cultural um, things to participate in, museums, theaters, festivals, all the time, um, and lots of parks and trails for outdoors people. So um, there's something for everyone here. It is kind of a hidden gem in my um, biased opinion, but um, I, and it, I do feel like a lot of students come here for their education and, and end up falling in love with the city. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, so I mentioned career services and how they help our students um, really kind of know their value um, and really uh, find their fit, which is actually their uh, motto, know your value, find your fit. Um, and this is a very small sampling of places that our, our recent graduates are working. Um, so you can see we're in medical centers and for like consulting firms and education services and school systems, um, UN programs, 
uh, United Way, so large scale kind of charity foundations and international organizations, um, and then um, governmental um, administrations, so our departments. So we are everywhere. Um, Okay, and um, I know a lot of people are interested in um, how to fund their graduate pro their graduate education. Um, so we have um, this is just kind of the the next steps for applying, and then I'll get to the funding part. For, sorry about that, but we do offer six million dollars worth of um, scholarships. Um, give or take each year, and we are very dedicated to um, helping our students find the, the ways to, to get their, their education funded. Um, everyone who checks the box on their application is considered for merit-based scholarships from the Brown School. We have a, a dedicated and very um, accessible financial aid office, as I mentioned. For merit-based scholarships, we are um, introducing a new piece of, of that app application and it's um, the application there's no additional application but um, you will be asked to um, to participate in a video which is an online video at your own time on your own time um, and then we do have um, a number of need-based scholarships which is a new program we have started um, for for admitted students that are able to show um, need financial need and that is, those are available to um, domestic and international students. Um, and we, so I mentioned our Brown School merit-based scholarships and then our need-based scholarships. Um, we do have a page on our website that um, lists external scholarships that our students have had success in getting, definitely worth looking at. Um, and then we did talk about the fellowship opportunities within the Brown School and the Greater Washington University campus. And then a lot of people um, who, who qualify for work study, federal work study, have part-time jobs within the Brown School or within WashU. Um, and of course, student loans are out there um, and then um, out-of-pocket expenses. Um, I should mention most of our students do have a part-time job to cover their um, living expenses, um, and it, most people find it manageable to have to to go to school full time, have a practicum, and a part-time job. Um, our students are busy, but um, and they find a way to relax and have fun too sometimes. So, <laughs> um, so your next steps for um, applying are. The, the, very, the two websites are there for MSW and MPH. Um, early decision deadline is December 15th. Our regular deadline is March 1st. And then after March 1st, we still accept applications. But um, after March 1st, our, um, you know, our, it's, a, it's based on availability. And um, for those interested in merit-based scholarships and need-based scholarships, I would urge you to try to get in for the early action. Um, but you should also definitely by March 1st. Um, and a couple events that are coming up that we would love for you to participate in if you can. Fall Preview Day is um, this September 29th. It's a Friday. It's, it's one afternoon where you will have a chance to interact um, and, and listen to faculty current students, you'll um, learn a little bit more about the curriculum and the programs. Um, and then there's an optional tour at, at four. Um, it's a great way to get on campus and get a feel for our culture here and to meet current students and to learn about all the resources that we've talked about. Um, and then our next virtual info session, um, if this format works best for you, um, is all about the application process. So tips for submitting your best application, your strongest application. And that will be Wednesday, October 11th at the same time, this noon to one central time. Um, and this is my contact information. Um, again, I'm Laura Peer. That's my email address. Um, and you can certainly reach out to me directly. Or if you just go to our website and contact us anyway, um, we, will, we will be able to respond to you. Um, Okay, so we do have some questions that have been submitted. 
Um, I'm going to toggle back so you will see our faces. Um, I think. Yes, there we are. Um, so I, we did have some people submit questions previously. Did we have any live submissions? OK, so I'm going to go through our list. Um, and so the first one was just types of financial aid and scholarships. And um, I think we touched on that pretty well. Um, and someone asked about um, a way, any way to get help with covering the application fee. And this um, person is an international student. So in for the, it, it depends on which program, but there are ways to um, request a financial hardship fee waiver for the application. Um, and it's all kind of self-explanatory in the application process. Um, and someone, let's see. Um, another great question that we get a lot is, is it possible to schedule classes part time in order to continue working full time? So officially we offer um, only a full time curriculum. And, and because of that, we can't guarantee that all the classes you need to take will be offered in the appropriate sequence to finish um, within a timely manner on a part-time basis. Um, but the other piece of that is that students do show up and, and life happens and they have to go down to part-time. Um, so it's something we can't guarantee. We don't, there's no box to tick to apply the part-time student. Um, but I guess I, I guess the official answer is it has been done, but we don't have a guarantee for it to, to happen um, in a timely manner. Um, another application question was about um, if there are unforeseen circumstances once you've been admitted, do we allow um, students to defer admission? Yes, we do. There is a deferral request form that you have to um, submit. You would email us directly and um, ask for the form. And, um, you know, in most cases, we um, allow a deferral. Um, there is a deadline, usually in July. So if it's after July, we're less likely to offer the deferral option. Um, and we do generally allow it for one year. Um, in cases of active duty in the military or Peace Corps, other things like that that are two years, um, we will work on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, let's see, I'm just scanning here. Um, I, there are some good questions for our students I would like to end with. Um, let's see. Um, Ruth, can you talk about international students' life at the Brown School? <laughs> or your one international student's one international life? Student's life. Yeah. So I found that, first of all, moving to St. Louis was, I thought it was going to be a daunting experience, but it wasn't as bad as I anticipated it would be, just because there's so many different people, so many people who are also new to the area that are just so willing to help you adjust and give you the help that you need. And the Brown School is very special in that way that it has a lot of accommodations for international students. We have an office for international student and scholar affairs, and they basically just make sure that you are moving along the process as comfortably as possible. We have sessions that allow us to adjust to different aspects of American culture, which I think is really important. For example, academic writing in the US and understanding what that is. Financial aid services, uh, Matt Newlin is very accessible to us and helping us understand how to pay for school. And that was a big concern of mine because of just how much it costs to go to graduate school, even with the scholarships for international students because there are scholarships that are not available to us as international students. But they're very helpful and like, Laura said they want to help you pay for school, basically stay in school. So they just make sure that you have all the information that you need. And I found that really very helpful. It has made my learning experience easier because I'm not worried Good. about the finances. And I think that's been a really big plus for me. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Matt Newland is great in financial aid. And he um, he's great about giving you the facts and the information. and. Um, he wants students to really know what, you know, what it what is involved in financing their own education. So he wants our students to be 
uh, fully um, aware. Um, one more kind of application question. Um, someone asked if it is um, necessary or if it's necessary to have um, a certain amount of um, professional experience um, in public health for the public health program. And our application does not require um, a certain number of years of post of graduate experience. We do look at experience as part of the holistic application process um, and you know we value experience but it's not there's no requirement and there are ways to talk about your undergraduate volunteer work, jobs, travel, um, study abroad as, ex as public health experience. So um, I I'm going to toggle now to our final page while, um, and I'm going to ask Bridget and Ruth to talk about um, a question that, well, I'll, I'll share the question after I go back to the screen. I wanted to share a list of dates that um, I will be traveling, as, as well as my coworkers, Sarah and Josh. Um, we're, we have a really busy travel season coming up, and we would love to connect with you. Um, if, if we're coming near you or if you can make it to one of these events. Um, the idealist fairs are wonderful places to um, find um, other like-minded people and, and opportunities. It's, it's a, a graduate fair for people who, who really want to make a difference in the world. Um, and then the This is Public Health grad fairs are wonderful. It's just public health programs. Um, usually about 25 of the best public health programs in the country, all rep representatives are all there. So a great resource um, and we will be there. And then here's a list of various universities that we'll be at as well. Um, so I do hope you will look, look us up if, you're, if we're coming close to you or that you will um, take the time to come visit us um, one way or another. And I'm gonna end this with, um, asking Ruth and Bridget to briefly share a really great question that somebody submitted. What is one thing you wish you knew while you were applying to the Brown School? And what is one thing you wish you knew before coming here, once you decided to come? Bridget, would you like to start? Sure. <laughs> our, um, our second year MSW student. So probably while applying, I wish I would have known just how much I could utilize the resources. I lived in St. Louis at the time, and I don't know why it didn't occur to me, but I mean, the admissions office exists for a reason. Like, if you want to see a class, if you want to do a tour, um, if you want to come multiple times for a visit, you totally can. Um, the staff is here to like really let you know about what we have to offer and see if it's a good fit for you. So I think I wish I maybe would have used some of that more. Um, especially since I was local. So anyone who is local or in close driving distance, I would strongly encourage you to connect with a faculty member or do a tour, visit a class or something like that. Just like know that you can reach out and engage now, even as you're considering us. Um, I want to think about the like before coming a student. I'm not okay. sure. I'll go to Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do I think? I should have known or would have liked to know to have known when I was applying to the Brown School. I think I agree with Bridget about the resources that were available to me. I probably did not understand the scope. I was unique in that I had the opportunity to come perform preview day that allowed me to become more exposed to what those resources were and that just opened me up. I wanted to come and speak to people well, I got their emails and was able to email back and forth and get to know more about what research different faculty members were doing and which actually eventually led me to my research fellowship and I'm just really grateful for that. And then what I wish I knew before becoming a student at the Brown School, uh, I feel like I had a good idea about because of using those resources about what to expect. But even when I got here, just realizing the magnitude of the importance of the program, I think um, being here at the Brown School and realizing just how much work gets put into that. Yeah, I probably would have wanted to know more about just how much work it would be, but I'm just really excited about the program. Great. <laughs> I think about being a student, I wish I would have known or like remembered that two years can go really fast and 
I mean, there's definitely a good balance of find new things, like take a class you think you wouldn't take coming in, but like, yeah, it's fast. I don't know. Just like think, think about what you want to do in your time here. It's like a really amazing, dedicated time to immerse yourself in changing your like career tra trajectory or what you're studying academically. So um, really soaking all that in for the time that you are in school. Great, thank you. I'm gonna just, we're gonna show our faces to say goodbye. It takes a second here. Um, well, we are, you can see us, we can't see us, but we're on screen. Um, <laughs> so um, thank you so much for, for sitting in and, and um, participating in this info session. Um, feel free to click back and go through it if there were some screens you were interested in and I clicked too fast. Check out our website and um, be in touch with us with any questions at any point in your researching graduate programs, application, and decide, you know, decision making process. We are here. We'd love to host you for a visit or to meet with you at one of our um, events that we're traveling to. And, um, please tune into our next virtual info session as well. And thanks to Bridget and Ruth for their participation. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>